Hello, everyone, and welcome back to week three of NFL Hard Hitters. I'm your host, Carson, joined by... Ethan Ferris, Noah Greener, and Matthew Mopus. Pretty uh, exciting and unpredictable week of uh, football last week. A lot to talk about here. Obviously, we'll get into post-game analysis as we get into and analyzing the games this week. But we start off with a bit of a snooze fest on Thursday Night Football. Uh, we've been spoiled with Thursday Night Football so far with the uh, Chiefs and Ravens and the uh, Bills and Dolphins. And now we finally get a game that feels like it's designed for Thursday Night Football. We get the New England Patriots taking on the New York Jets uh, at MetLife Stadium. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think these two teams are, are pretty much on the same level this year. Um, as far as I, I know, I think the... Uh, the Jets may take this one. They do play at home. Uh, that is a, that can be a hard crowd, especially for the New England Patriots. Um, so I do think that the uh, Jets will take this one at home. Uh, I don't think they're on the same level, really. Uh, I think the Jets are supposed to be a lot better than the Patriots. But the Patriots play hard. They play tough. Even with, a lot, with not a lot of talent, they play to the final whistle. So I don't know if I like it, but I just got a feeling about the Patriots this week. All right, moving on to the Sunday slate, starting off at 1 p.m., we've got the 2-0 Chargers against Ethan's 2-0 Pittsburgh Steelers, who are all aboard the Justin Fields hype train. What do you got for your team this week? Oh, yeah, man. You already know I'm going with my Steelers. Uh, I'll keep it rolling. Uh, I don't know if the Chargers are going to be enough for, for this uh, Steelers defense. I'm excited to see uh, TJ Watt go up against Joe Alt. Um, but I do think that uh, Joe Wall is, uh, is not enough for him, man. Uh, I think TJ Watt's going to get through there. This defense is going to cause problems, as it has been uh, since the start of the season. And, uh, yeah, I like, uh, like my Steelers again. All right, next up, we've got another battle between 2-0 and o teams. We've got the Houston Texans taking on the Minnesota Vikings, who just came off a win against the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going to go with the Texans. Uh, I watched my Bears get beat up by them last week. Granted, our defense was the only reason we were in that game. Their defense as well is very potent. And if the Vikings don't have Justin Jefferson, then I'm kind of concerned for their offense, not going to lie. So give it the Texans. Yeah, this is a really tough one. It's hard to ignore a team that just beat the reigning NFC champs who almost won the Super Bowl. Um, but I still, for some reason, I just can't get aboard the uh, Sam Darnold hype train yet. I just, I watched him at USC. I watched him throw, you know, three interceptions in a quarter as a Jets quarterback. So uh, I'm still not moved. Maybe if he beats the Texans, I'll have to uh, start putting some respect on his name. But until he does that, I'm going to have to go with CJ Stroud and the Texans. Next up, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the undefeated New Orleans Saints, who have scored like 90 points through two weeks of football. They just beat the Cowboys by like 30 points last week. What is going on with this Saints team? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we keep, uh, like, we don't know that much about the Saints every week. We choose uh, the other team. Um, and I think this week uh, we got to choose the Saints here. I'm definitely going with the Saints. Uh, Saints have been playing great, don't get me wrong. But don't be fooled by Derek Carr. He does this every year. He has, like, six really good games. Then he coasts for a little bit. Then when they're out of the playoffs, they win, like, four in a row. And still don't make the playoffs. So... I think they're still doing great, and I am going to take them this week because the Eagles completely choked. That defense, when it comes down to crunch time, is horrible, and I don't know why you don't run it on a third and two with the, one of the best running backs in the league. So just for, that, just for that, and as an apology to all Saints fans for my week one pick, I'm going to take the uh, Saints. <laughs> all righty, next up we've got the uh, Broncos led by Bo Picks taking on uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Bucks are going to win too, but I must say that uh, Bo Picks, I mean, <laughs> it is a fitting nickname, but I mean, give him time. He's a rookie quarterback. I got to say that about my quarterback too, uh, Caleb Williams. I mean, he was really good in college, and I mean, what kind of help does he have with that Broncos offense? Not much. Uh, so just give him time and he'll eventually develop, but he will not go into Tampa Bay and beat that team, so give me the Bucks. Bo Nix does need some time, but don't forget he was also in college for seven years, so he's, take, he's taken quite a bit of snaps. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, like all rookie quarterbacks, he does need time. I do agree with you on that, but this Buccaneers defense, this Buccaneers team is not someone that's just going to let him take that time to figure out how the game of football works. Uh, Baker, Baker, touchdown maker. Uh, you can keep him going, keep the Buccaneers rolling, and they will also be 3-0 and after this week. Give me the Buccaneers. All right, next up, we've got the Green Bay Packers and Malik Willis with a potential revenge game against his former team, the Tennessee Titans, who are sitting at 0-2 and, and are probably one dumb Will Levis play away a game from being 2-0. and What do we got in this game? Uh, I mean, I, I think the Packers surprised a lot of us beating the Colts, uh, for sure. Uh, Malik Willis and overusing uh, Josh Jacobs. I mean, that, that man went crazy. Uh, they handed the ball off to him like, a lot um so i do think that the packers take this one as long as they stick to their game plan um 
Malik Willis is a manageable game quarterback, and I think he, uh, he can take this game against the Titans. Uh, Malik Willis can throw the ball. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> but that Packers team does, still does scare me. The reason the Colts lost them last week is the offense just didn't get turned on. Even with allowing 250 rushing yards in the first half, they only gave up 10 points in the first half. So yeah, there's still you see all the great stats there, and they're still – but you got to put up points on the board when you're doing all that. But you're still playing the Titans. Uh, give them the Packers. All right, next up, we've got a really uh, interesting one here between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns. Personally, I think this game is boring. I don't have much to say about it. Um, I'm going to take the Browns, though. Yeah, the Giants are still uh, getting their karma for choosing Daniel Jones over <laughs> Saquon Barkley, and that is uh, evident every week. Uh, this Browns team, their offense is still incredibly uninspiring. I still wish Deshaun Watson would not be allowed on a football field. Uh, start Jameis, you know, that's what I'm saying if you're the Browns. Um, but that defense is still elite. It's a very solid unit led by Miles Garrett, and that Giants O-line is not built to handle <laughs> Miles Garrett. So, yeah, give me the Browns. All right, next up to round up the 1 o'clock slate, we've actually got a battle between two of our uh, teams here. We've got Noah's Colts taking on Packy's Bears. <laughs> um, we have no run defense. Uh, Gus Bradley may be the worst defensive coordinator in all the league. Um, but the offense will get it together. We're going to get Josh Downs back, who had a really good season last year, and he's finally coming back now. Him and AR had a really good connection before he got hurt last year. AR had two three picks last week. That's the least of my concerns. He's only had six starts. He's the same age as Caleb Williams, so I'm not really concerned about that. It's going to take some, low, or some growing pains. We are at home. Jonathan Taylor looked good last week. I don't trust the Bears' offense, but it wouldn't surprise me if Caleb Williams goes, goes off for 400 yards and, like, four touchdowns. But as of right now, I can't go against my team giving the Colts. I'm going to go with the – oh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I'm going to go with the Bears. <laughs> uh, basically because, uh, you know, they're my team, and uh, I have total faith in my defense, and hopefully they could shut down Anthony Richardson. But that offense is looking really shaky, man. Um, Caleb, if you're going to come to play football in Chicago, the fans are hungry to see a good quarterback. Please give us the show that we're looking for. Granted, I don't blame you entirely. Our coaching staff is terrible. So um, we, need to pick up, we need to pick up our tempo now if we're going to win some football games, and I think this game is a really good starting point for that. So give me the Bears. Now moving on to the 4 o'clock slate, we have the Carolina Panthers, who after two weeks have benched first overall pick Bryce Young and are now starting Andy Dalton at quarterback, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, coming off a win against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, we can see if uh, Andy Dalton is still a veteran guy that can at least uh, throw the ball to his targets and, and gain some offensive yards. But I think the Raiders uh, impressed a lot of us last week. Uh, they, they fought all the way to the end. Um, I know some of y'all were doubting down in Gardner Mitchell at the uh, beginning of the season. He is, uh, he's, he's, he's becoming a, a stable guy in Oakland, I mean, in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> and I think that the uh, Raiders uh, do take this one. Um, but Andy Dalton has never lost to the Raiders in his career, and it would be the most Raiders thing ever to go and beat the Baltimore Ravens and then lose to the Carolina Panthers at home. Uh, so give me the Panthers. It's a stupid pick, but it's kind of a fun, stupid pick. We have got the Miami Dolphins, who are now two at list. Um, it was a very scary injury uh, in that game he it's his like what fifth concussion in two years fourth fourth third or fourth somewhere they like he's had so many concussions that amazon prime had a concussion reel ready um <laughs> which is pretty which is pretty crazy of them in the first place like how do you just have that pre-made they, they were ready for him to get a concussion which is kind of messed up if you think about it um but they're taking on the seattle seahawks skylar thompson starting uh for the dolphins what do you guys think this game is looking like yeah, I mean, I don't think Skylar Thompson has something to to, to prove here. Um, like, I mean, he obviously does have something to prove, but I don't think he is going to prove anything here. Uh, I think the Seahawks, they got a good defense still, a good secondary for sure. Um, I think the Seahawks with, uh, I think Walker's returning maybe. Uh, I do see that uh, offense maybe going off. Uh, I like the Seahawks. Seahawks, I think I've had the easiest schedule out of anybody to start the year. Um, now that two is out. Poor Tua, man. Um, I knew it was bad right when I saw him on the ground. I saw his <laughs> fingers lock up, and I was like, oh, no. Um, Skyler Thompson doesn't impress me. But they still have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I don't care how bad you are. As long as you can maybe throw the ball 20 yards, you're probably going to get a touchdown or two. So when you have that much talent, especially with HN, I think you're still going to score points. But I can't trust you to win a game. So I'm still going to take the Seahawks. Their defense is really good. I like what they've been doing with that. 
And with Walker back and DK starting to finally get in the groove, I think they're going to win. All right, next up, we have got the 49ers taking on the Los Angeles Rams, who have nobody left on offense. <laughs> 49ers are going to be looking to get some revenge after losing last week, so give me the 49ers. Uh, yeah, uh, 49ers. All right, next up, we've got two potent offenses going up against each other. We've got the Detroit Lions taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, yeah, give me the Cardinals all the way. I like how they're playing. Um, I like how they played in Buffalo. I like how they played uh, against L.A. I mean, they rolled past L.A. They made a statement for sure. Uh, I think we see Marvin Harrison is starting to uh, flourish in that uh, offense a little bit. Um, James Conner, he's been doing well every week. So um, they're, they're home. Uh, so give me the Cardinals, man. I like them all the way. Yeah, this is a tougher game than I thought it'd be. If the Lions had steamrolled the Buccaneers last week, I would have felt a lot better about picking them. I am still going to pick them. I think they are the better team here. I think the Cardinals are on the up and up. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. had his breakout game, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, not you know A lot to love there. Um, but I do think the Lions are the better team at the end of the day, and uh, their defense will come through for them at a key moment. All right, to round out the 4 o'clock slate, we've got the 0-2 Baltimore Ravens. I don't think any of us thought we'd be saying that, taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Ravens, that offensive line is looking really bad. I don't know what their play calling is. You have King Henry in the backfield. They just don't want to use him for some reason. So they're really concerning with coaching, which I never thought I would say about a Ravens team. And the Cowboys are the Cowboys. I'll never trust the Cowboys. And But it is, is them to lose bad and rebound, so I'm going to take the Cowboys. I've never liked the Cowboys. I don't know what it is about them. I mean, me and Stephen A. Smith must have something in common. I mean, like, you know, we, we all it just, no. Ugh. Every year they put out a team that's so good, and they go to the first round of the playoffs to what, just lose? Yes. Uh, I'm just bantering, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is a really boring game. I'm going to pick the Ravens in that one. And then on Sunday Night Football, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the Falcons played a great game against uh, Philadelphia. Um, and they came to Philly and beat Philly. Um, so obviously they're starting to really work that offense out with uh, London and Beaton Robinson. Um, we saw Pitts a little bit. Uh, the Chiefs, though, they're, they're a great team. I mean, they're, they're a monumental team. Um, but the Falcons are playing at home, and I think this may be a, a, a little bit of a streak in this offense. I mean, we saw Kirk Cousins really play well um, against Philly, and uh, I do think that the uh, Falcons take this one at home. The Falcons team is getting better. I think they are still very much so in contention to win the NFC South. I think both the uh, Saints and Buccaneers being 2-0 is a bit unexpected and throws a wrench in their plans, but I still think they need some stuff to work out. Uh, Cousins still is working off the rust of that Achilles tear. I mean, don't forget, he's only he's less than a year removed from that Achilles tear at a, as a 36-year-old quarterback. Um, so they're going to figure it out, but the Chiefs aren't going to be the team to let them figure it out. Uh, Andy Reid's not going to... Uh, let them make as many mistakes and uh, benefit from them as uh, Nick Sirianni did to give me the Chiefs in this game. And then to round out the week, we've got a double header on Monday night. I don't really know why they do this because the games start 45 minutes after each other, so how are you going to watch both games at once? Um, but first off, you've got the 0-2 Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the 2-0 Buffalo Bills. I might go on a little rant here, but division rival, all I've heard is about the, like, the next Peyton Manning, Trevor Lawrence. I'm going to keep saying it. When are you going to break out? You're in year four, three or four, and you still are just mid. You had that one good se one good half season where you finally turned it on and nothing happened. As a division rival, I'm frustrated with the, with the uh, Jaguars. I want to see a great quarterback. I'm a fan of football, even if it is a division rival. They can't score in the red zone. Their defense is keeps them in games, and their offense can't do anything. I don't know what's going to happen there. Everything is just mid. It is the most mid of mid organizations, and they've always been mid. That's why they've never won anything. The Bills all the way. Trevor Lawrence, do something. The Bills always do seem to have trouble for the Jaguars for some reason. You saw it last year. You saw it the year before that. Um, who knows why? Um, but this Jaguars team is just so uninspiring in so many different ways. I had a gut feeling about Trevor Lawrence. Like like you said, everyone was hailing him as the next Peyton Manning, the greatest quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, and he has been nothing short of like 10% of that. He has just had one good half season. He throws too many picks. He makes too many bad decisions. He can't find his receivers. Christian Kirk, his number one guy, has two catches through two weeks. Um, and this Bills defense despite all their injuries, is playing better football than they thought they'd be. Even though everything happened with Tua in the third quarter of that Bills-Dolphins game, 
they did hold the Dolphins to 10 points through three quarters with Tua. They locked down Tyreek Hill. They locked down Jalen Waddell. Um, so I think the Bills are going to have no problem taking care of the Jaguars this week. And then to close it out, we've got the Washington Commanders coming to the Queen City of Cincinnati to take on my Bengals. Listen, as a Bengals fan, I just have to put it on record this one time. That was a fraudulent call on that fourth and 16. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. The ref didn't throw the flag until after he watched the ball fall incomplete. He didn't throw the flag before the contact. He didn't throw the flag when the contact happened. He waited for the second the ball hit the turf to throw the flag and give Kansas City 15 yards. Both of the players were going for the ball. It was not pass interference, and the Chiefs got handed another win, as they always do, because they're the NFL Golden Boys. Now, that my rant is done, I am going to pick the My Bengals this week. Um, we were this close. We were a terrible call away from beating the reigning Super Bowl champs, and that was during week two, when we still usually are very bad. We picked it up from week one. I think week one, we can literally just chop down to... We were looking ahead to the Chiefs now uh, because we had a much better game plan ready for the Chiefs game. Uh, now that we're 0-2, this is the part of the season where we start kicking it in a high gear. We've got the Commanders and the Panthers the next two weeks. So if we can't be 0 and if we can't be 2-2 two and two, uh, two weeks from now, then we've done something horribly, horribly wrong. So yeah, give me my Bengals to close out the week. All right, thank you all for tuning in to watch week three of Hard Hitters. Be sure to tune in next week to see how all our picks went.